Hello and welcome to part three in how I made my 1780s stays. This is the final video in this little series and we see the stays come to completion. In my previous videos about making these stays, I have shown making my mock-up. Then for the real stays, I cut out the cotille and the brocade, flatlined the pieces, and then stay stitched the tabs. In the part two video, I firstly joined the front and side pieces, arranging the layers to ensure the outer layer aligned with the inner one. Then I joined on the back pieces, top stitched those seams, and the lining was folded over and stitched in the ditch to secure it in place. The channels for the grommets and for the flat steel bones that go either side of them were stitched from the outside of the garment. Then the rest of the boning channels were sewn from the inside of the stays. This video is part three and takes us to the end of making these stays. This includes Cutting and inserting the bones in the lower section. Using bias binding to bind the tabs. Cutting and inserting the remainder of the bones. Setting the grommets in for spiral lacing. And lacing up with ribbon. Checking the final fit and adjusting as needed. And sewing bias binding along the upper edge and on the stomacher, finishing with attaching the straps. It's time to insert the first of the bones, starting with the five bones on each half of the stays that must be in before the tab binding can be done. I'm using six by 1.5 millimeter synthetic whalebone. And to begin, I make a tester rod to check the length of the bones required, inserting it into the bone channel and using a ruler to measure. I then measure off the length of bone required and cut it off. The corners are rounded and then filed. Then the bone is inserted into the stays. This process was repeated for each of the bones. And while I was taking care, I was also going for speed. I made these stays late last year and wanted to wear them for a student dance performance. The footage you're seeing now is from 6.30am on a Friday morning, two days before the performance on the Sunday evening, <laughs> so it was full steam ahead. The process was repeated on the other half of the stays, and with those ten bones in, I was almost ready to bind the tabs. The binding will follow the stay stitch lines at the bottom of the stays. But before I jump straight into sewing tabs, I ease into sewing on the bias binding by sewing around the lower edge of the stomacher. I firstly trim down the brocade,
Then, being careful of the horizontal bone, I pin on the first few centimetres of the bias binding. I sew the bias onto the stomacher using my hands to position it. I fold the bias tape over to the wrong side and pin it thoroughly, <laughs> starting at the curves at the bottom and then with lower pin density up the straight sides. I stitch in the ditch from the right side to secure the binding trying not to stab myself. <laughs> then remove the stab sticks. Then it is time for the actual tab bias binding. Rather nerve-wracking. I pin on the bias to get it started, then using my hands to form the curves and lining the edge of the unfolded bias tape along the line of stay stitches, I ease it around. I marked the top of the tab with a pin to know how far to stitch, then ease the curve around to head back down on the other side. It's also important to ensure that the bones stay as far up in the channels as possible, you don't want to accidentally hit one with the needle. This was my first go at binding tabs and it was definitely a learning curve. I recommend you read through Red Threaded's blog about tab binding and I'll put the link in the description below. This was also done on the second side, slowly, slowly easing the bias binding around, keeping the edge aligned with the stitched and stitching in the fold of the binding. With each tab I got a little better. The curve at the bottom of the tabs was fiddly but the tops of the tabs was mind-bending. Then it's time to trim around the tabs, cutting along the stay stitching lines, being very careful not to accidentally snip the bias binding. Then press the bias binding down around the curves and wrap the binding around the tabs. And press it again <laughs> to get it to sit reasonably flat.
red threaded. Don't use pins. But I couldn't get that to work. So I pinned the tops of the tabs just with two pins crossed and used clips to hold the bottom in place. Then I folded in the ends and pinned them as well. After backstitching to secure, I slowly stitch in the ditch around the bias binding, being careful that the pins don't get caught underneath. And removing the clips as I approach them. I used a 1.5mm stitch length and pivoted often when going around the curves. I realised that the bone channel on the inside of the grommets was partially blocked, so I completely sealed that off. And finished off the binding. I removed the pins and checked that all of the inside of the bias was caught down. And the tab binding is done. So here's where we're up to. The lower bones are in and the tabs are bound. It's far from perfect, but for a first attempt, I'm very happy. On to the rest of the bones. This is done with a slightly more production line procedure to make the most of the very limited time before I needed to wear these stays. Firstly, I measure each required bone length and record it on the pattern pieces. Starting with the vertical bones in the stomacher, then the horizontal bones, and the center front and back which will be flat steel and then all the rest I cut 12 mm wide synthetic whalebone for the center of the stomacher and 6 mm wide boning for the rest Then I cut the synthetic whale boning for the front piece. And the back and side pieces of the stays. Then it was time to go and have my hair done in preparation for the performance. For this was 2019 and at such a time people could freely roam the streets of Melbourne. I arrived at Buffon Delacroix on Saturday afternoon and was immediately treated to bubbles in a gorgeous teacup, setting the scene for an afternoon of indulgence.
I trim and file all the bones for my stays as the charming Michael Davids works his magic. My hair is curled and teased and moulded into a glorious Marie Antoinette-inspired updo, all ready for the French fans' performance on the Sunday. Then, after a tram ride home where I looked completely normal and didn't get stared at at all, I trim down the sides of the brocade and insert the bones, starting with the flat steel bones for either sides of the grommets, then the synthetic whale bones. It's getting so close to being done now. <laughs> On Sunday morning, yes, the day of the performance, I work out and mark where the grommets need to be placed. I settle back into my armchair and then punch the holes for the grommets along the fronts and the backs. Then it's time for inserting the grommets, referring as ever to the notes I made after my first corset course with the wonderful Luana of Vanyanis. I widen the hole with an awl Then insert the first part of the grommet and push the fabric down to get it through properly. I put on the second part, being careful with orientation, and to ensure they're sitting properly in the plim prize, I give them a wiggle, then squeeze to insert. After much wrist-tiring work, the first half is done. I repeat it all on the second side, and then all the grommets are done. I pin down the stays with a two inch lacing gap at the back. And then insert the ribbon in spiral lacing trying to keep it flat and smooth. Next, I cut down the top edge of the brocade to match the cotille. And it's time to try it on! I'm very happy with the fit, just need to lower slightly under the arms as was expected from the mock-up. Hurrah! And it's time to throw caution to the wind. 
as I have very limited time and want to lower the arm scythe, I remove the bones and cut. The bones are then trimmed, filed and reinserted. Then the bias binding is attached to the top edge in the same way as was described previously in the video as was discussed in more detail and with better light when it wasn't the morning of the performance for which I wanted to wear these stays. The stomacher is similarly finished. Lastly, the straps. I trim down the brocade, pin two pieces together, and sew on bias binding. Then overlock on the short edge. Then sew the straps to the stays. I put in the final grommets for tying on the straps at the venue during the tech rehearsal and tied on the ribbons and it was done just in time. The costume worked wonderfully for our fabulous French fans dance at Maison Burlesque's Cherry Poppers Showcase. A tip for wearing stays or a corset without a chemise, wear a singlet top and push the straps underneath. After suitable rest and recuperation, we also had a wonderful photo shoot day where I got to get all glammed up once again and have some beautiful photos taken of my garments by 42nd Street Photography at the Vamp Studio at Maison Burlesque. So here we are, my completed 1780s stays. I'm really happy with how they've turned out. Uh, there were a lot of hard work and not a huge amount of time to do them in, but I'm very happy with what I've got and look forward to getting lots of use out of them. Thank you for watching and I hope you can join me again next time.